Hello everyone, welcome back to Video Editing 1 with Professor Harris. Today we're going through MC 110, Lesson 2, Inputting Media. So as you know, unless you inherit a project that's mid-edit, you'll probably at some point need to start importing media. Since you're probably familiar with those basic import and linking steps, we'll quickly review those concepts and then we'll move on to more helpful tools throughout this lesson that can help you uh, when sp inputting specific file types. So today we're going to be working with the anesthesia project. This isn't necessarily on the, uh, this isn't necessarily one of the main um, Avid provided projects. I did end up having to make this um, and I made a new Avid project and I named it anesthesia lesson two. Um, so you don't have to do that. I'm just doing this for your reference inside Media Composer. All right, let's look at the goals for today's lesson. Number one, we're going to review ways to input video and audio. Number two, we're going to revisit the source browser. Number three, we're going to understand how Media Composer links media. Number four, we're going to add clips to our project. Number five, we're going to copy or convert linked media to Avid native media. And number six, we're going to prepare for prepare, sorry, import settings. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, video and audio input methods. Let's start this lesson by reviewing the ways that you can input media into your Media Composer project. So let's go ahead and complete this little three question quiz here, match them up. Um, I'm gonna give you a second and then I'm gonna talk them through. Okay, so number one, we have capture. Which definition lines up with capture? That's right, A, it uses cable connections to input video and audio from videotape, satellite, or live feed. Um, that's obviously capture. Now import, right, C, converts video and audio files to Avid native media and places them in the Avid space media files folder. And then link, obviously B, connects a media file to your project. No media is moved or copied. Again, we're just working off data. So pretty simple little quiz there. I hope you got those right. If you didn't, that's fine. We'll just keep moving here. And uh, you'll 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 remember this shortly, I'm sure. That said, um, capture is not covered in this course, so we're not going to be covering how to capture uh, media and put it into. But capture requires additional um, hardware, such as an Avid Artists or uh, I/O I slash O option or similar third-party devices to convert and encode the video and audio signals. So again, we won't be doing that. Um, except for productions involving archival material, tape capture is uncommon. So uh, we won't be, again, we won't be working with capture, but um, you're not going to be working with tape very often. So for more information, we can refer to the capturing media section in Media Composer help. Um, so if you're looking for help for Media Composer about capture, you can look that up on their website. Regardless of how you input your media into Media Composer, um, MIDI Composer creates a link between the clips in your bin and the media files on your drives. And next we have media linking by type. So since you'll likely work with file-based media, let's review two types MIDI Composer supports. Camera native media and Avid native media. You've heard me talk a lot about this if you uh, took my MC101 course. So camera native files are the original uh, audio and video files created by the camera. These files exist in many formats such as R3D, ARI, MXF, MOV, MP4, JPG, WAV, and MP3. Video and audio files you download for export from another application also fall into this category. So when linking to camera native media, Media Composer creates a link to the original file in its current location and reads the file's current format. You manage camera native media files yourself by directly copying, moving, or deleting the files at the operating system level. If you move or rename the files, you'll need to relink them in Media Composer. So this is all very basic stuff. Again, linking is just avid looking out outside of the project at your files, your camera, video files, wherever you recorded them and saved them on your hard drive, and saying, okay, here they are, and it's going to read them directly from there. And then we have the fact that Media Composer relies on plugins to decode linked media and uses its built-in plugin to decode common formats and codecs. If you work with camera with a camera that's new to the market or 
just new to you, you may need to download an additional Avid Media Access or AMA plugin before Media Composer can read the camera files. So you might need special software, you might need to download uh, Avid Media Access, an Avid Media Access plugin before you can use that camera format or link to those files. Uh, to download additional AMA plugins, you can go to Avid Link and then AMA plugins. Um, so up here in Av on the screen, we got Avid Link and then uh, AMA plugins. You can select this, and I'll pull up what that looks like because I haven't done this in a while. So I'm curious. There we go. Yeah, we can see all kinds of different plugins. I'll agree and proceed, and we can see we've got different plugins for Avid Media Composer. Very cool. All right, and then we have Avid Native files. So Media Composer creates Avid Native media, traditionally in the MXF format, whenever you import, consolidate, copy, or transcode, convert, media native, sorry, camera native files. So just a reminder, Avid Native media is stored in one of two uh, dedicated directories. That's external drives, Avid Media files, MXF1, or on the internal level, that's again, user shared, Avid Media Composer, no spaces, uh, Avid Media files, MXF1, or however it may be. So Avid is storing those files um, right on your computer, your hard drive, um, and or your external drive. A link between the clip in your bin and the media file on the drive is still created. So um, if I had if I had imported media in here, I could still right click it and do reveal file, and that would show me the uh, that it would take me to the directory of those MXF files. So I could see um, still where that that link is being created, where I my transcoded, consolidated slash imported media is as far as um, the Avid Avid um, sorting system. Excuse me. All right. Uh, there is no need to download additional plugins when it comes to importing media into Avid Media Composer, so we won't have to worry about anything along those lines. Okay, so does the term media tool sound familiar? That was one of the last things we covered in the MC 101 book, but we're going to use some of its additional features in this course to locate and manage media files. So which approach works best for inputting media, linking or importing? It depends on your project scope and the source media that you're working with. You can use the following scenarios as a guide. So here are three scenarios that might dictate the way you, you choose whether or not you're importing or linking files in Avid. If you're cutting a promo for an evening news, for the evening news, and the camera native media plays smoothly in Media Composer, linking would be an ideal. So if you had something that needed to be made quickly, um, linking would probably be the, the fastest way to do that. Um, if you're adding audio from your faculty, sorry, your facility's music library, importing the files to a stock assets project works well. So you would want to import the audio if you were going to spend a little more time um, working with a specific project. And if you're cutting a documentary film um, that will live on the Media Composer for several months, linking to the camera native media and then copying and converting it to avid native media works best. So you would first start out by linking, you would work with it for months, it would be right here, it would be quicker, um, but then once you were done you would start um, consolidating and converting that to be avid native media as you got closer to your final export. Regardless of which scenario aligns best with your project, you'll likely use the source browser to input your media. So let's look at using the source browser. We know how the source browser works. Um, we can make a new bin. Let's make a new bin and we'll name it video. Excuse me. There we go. Video. We'll open our video bin. And then in our video bin, we can right click in here and do input source browser. And we'll drag this center so we can see what we're doing. So, as you may recall, the source browser provides an easy way to browse for media files, review them, and bring the selected files into our project. If you've been using the source browser regularly or recently finished the MC 101 course, this section can serve as a self-test. If you took time away from Media Composer or haven't input media in a while, this section provides a quick review, and we're going to break this into five subtopics. 
First is opening the source browser. So first we could go, we could have gone to file input um, and then source browser, um, or we could go um, tools, tools and then source browser. It's in there somewhere. Where is it? There it is, way at the top. Um, or we can right click in the bin like I did. We can do input source browser. So those are three ways to open the source browser. Um, but once we have the source browser open, we're going to identify the different windows because the source browser is similar to an operating system. So let's refer here. So number one, in the number one slot, we've got the navigation. This is all this stuff here. This is the navigation and favorite buttons. This includes back, forward, go to parent folder, and home directory buttons for quick navigation, plus a button for tagging favorite folders with the star icon. So we can use all these. So if I had a favorite folder, say my desktop, and I wanted to favorite it, I could just click this little star, and that will be saved to my favorites. Number two, we have the media folder view button. That's this little guy right here. We can select and deselect this. Um, and this displays camera card contents as thumbnails when selected. So if we wanted to toggle that back and forth, we could. Uh, we also, number three, we have the directory path. So that's this up here. Right now we're accessing COM 343 video editing folder on my desktop. And uh, we could we could start playing around in here and pick different directories for different things. And we can see that directory lined up here at the top. Cool. Let's shrink that. Next we have number four is collapse slash expand button. That's right here. We can collapse slash expand our source browser settings. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but that's an option. Number five, we have the input mode buttons. That's obviously the link and import buttons here. So we can switch between what we want to do when uh, adding media or inputting media into our project. Next, we have the target resolution menu that is right here. So we can select um, when we're when we click import it. It appears when we click link, it disappears. But import because it's transcoding, it's going to want to pick a codec. We've got our Avid native codec that we talked about in the last lesson. Um, and by default, this is set to DNX HD SQ. It's set to an Avid native codec that's uh, compatible with the media that you've imported or will import to your project. So that's nice that it does that automatically. Number seven, we have the destination drive. So this is where we're actually going to end up putting our media. Uh, or where it's actually getting routed to. So it says video and audio drives are both routing to Macintosh HD. If I had my flash drive in, I could pick Prof Harris 1, which is my flash drive, um, and then it would be saving any imported media to my Avid Space Media Files MXF document. Awesome. And then we also have number eight is the target bin menu. This lists the open bins. Um, we are not seeing that right now. Uh, where is it? It should be down here. Oh, duh, target is right here. Target bin, so I can pick which bin I want to put it in. I only have two bins right now, my anesthesia L2 bin and my video bin, so I'm going to leave it on in, on my, my video bin there. Um, cool. And then lastly, number nine, we have the import slash link button. It performs import or link operations when clicked. And that's this little guy right here, The when you actually select it to import or link it to your project. We can see that it changes every time we select one of these. Cool. I forgot to talk about this little settings icon, this little gear here. Um, this is where we could set different uh, image size adjustments and color levels and all kinds of other fun stuff before you actually import or link. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. That's uh, the source browser in a nutshell. Um, but as you may recall, the navigation pane, uh, which is left, includes yeah, up here uh, includes three ways to display your computer's folders so we have explore um, that's this option which we're currently selected on shows all your systems folders so we have just basic um, basic folders and we can do the drop downs on those um, i don't like this very much it's, it can be confusing we have our favorites so if we had favorites this is where they would appear in this tab and then we have recents and this lists the folders that we recently accessed um, that we could re-import from. So very nice. So those are three quick menus. Next, we have adding or removing folders from favorites. If we wanted to add something to our favorites, we would simply select the bin. Let's select desktop. 
and I'll star it. And that's now added to my favorites. And then when I click favorites, we'll see it appear right here. It's that simple. Cool. But if we wanted to remove it from our favorites, um, we could right click and choose remove from favorites. So I could just remove from favorites and hit yes. And now it's no longer my favorites bin. So we'll keep that nice and clean. Um, for some reason, Avid Media Composer, when I took the exam, they really wanted you to know the favorites and the favorite. So I guess I remember that you just you select something, you hit the favorite button, and then it goes to your favorites folder. It's really, really basic. All right. The fourth thing is using the media folder view button. So to use the media folder view button, we're going to leave the button inactive uh, to display camera card subfolders. Each represents a shot and contains a handful of files. So that's that's this guy here. Let's open something. Let's go back to my desktop here. And then if I go to... Okay, I found the folder that I was looking for uh, in my source browser. And uh, just in reference to this button, the enabling, it's disabling of, of folders with the media volumes. Um, I don't know what... I don't know what I'm doing, but it seems like no matter what I do, this doesn't actually change anything. So um, I know that it's just telling Media Composer to treat them like media volumes, but this is one of those small little things that Avid Media Composer likes to make a differentiation on, and they're going to ask you questions about this button, and they're going to test you on this button. So um, review it for yourself in uh, the book, and uh, yeah, just know that they, they want to know that you know that this enables and disables folders to be viewed as media volumes. That's all you really need to know. All right, number five is the preview media files in the source browser. Uh, source browser. To, pre to preview media files in the source browser, we can activate the frame view like I have now. So this is the, that's just the, the regular text view. This is the frame view. Um, and we can scrub through, we can see it. It does a little bit of a little play here, but we can drag through with ours. And that's kind of sliding through. Uh, we can also adjust the the size of these by using this little zoom in and zoom out. If we click with inside it and do Command L and Command K, that also works. But we can also click the thumbnail and either move the cursor over the selected thumbnail to skim through the video, or we can press the space bar and that will play through the video as well. So stagnant, I didn't think it was playing. Yeah, but no, we can we can uh, hit the space bar and that will play through the video. Um, and that's that's two ways that we can preview this directly in our source browser before we actually bring it into our project. As mentioned, the five items reviewed that we just reviewed here were covered in the lesson two of MC 101 course. So consider reviewing that lesson if you need a more in-depth review of all the functions and features we just talked about. All right, now, inputting media with link. So since MC101 course covered uh, linking, this section will quickly recap on those steps and adds uh, on how to use the source browser as an editing tool as well. So let's get into that. To link to camera native media, what we're going to do is make sure the link option is selected down here on the bottom left. Optionally, we could adjust the multi-channel audio setup. We would do that through this, this settings here by selecting the link options, and then we can uh, make those adjustments in this area here. Cool. All right. Um, so there's that. Oh, we can also select the files that we want to link. So let's select all three of these by drag selecting. Additionally, we could click one, hold shift, and click the other one. That would select them all. We could also just hold command and select specific clips. Um, where we can drag select like I just did. So I'll drag select because I'm going to uh, imp oh, sorry link all three of these clips. All right, and then we're going to select the target destination bin. So we have our target bin here. We're going to go to video, and then all we have to do is hit link, link, and we can see the little clip link icons appear, and these videos that we just imported appear here in our our little video bin. Nice. Let's look now into an awesome feature that Media Composer has, and that's editing from the source browser. So if you work on quick turnaround projects, an example would be like breaking news stories, same day wedding videos, or quick scene assembly on set, 
you can speed up the editing process by using the source browser as a bin. So if we we're going to set up our source browser to edit, first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the bin and we're going to do input source browser. So we're going to open our source browser. There's three things we want to set up first. Number one, we're going to ensure that load clips into the source monitor is set as active when we do the double click to. So this drop down, we're going to make sure that that's set there. Second thing we're going to do is make sure that the link option is active and double check multi-channel uh, auto audio mapping. So we're going to want to make sure that our link is set. And if we want to check the auto mapping, we could go to our tools and, and look in there. Next, we want to make sure we select the proper target bin. So our target bin is going to be video, because that's where we're going to put this stuff. And then what we're going to do is we can load a or sorry, load or create a new sequence. So we'll come over here, we'll do a new bin. We'll name this sequences. Cool. And then we'll open the sequences and we will um, right click, we'll do new sequence default, and we'll name this girl. Um, something very meaningful. All right, now that's going to auto open that sequence in our timeline. So now we've got our destination bin set, our target bin, change that to video. We've got our target bin set, everything's ready. Now we can uh, double click a file and that's going to load it into our source monitor here. And now from our source monitor, you guessed it, we can set in and out marks for this clip. So now we can be editing right here. So um, before we actually even import it or link it into our project, I can load these clips. I can scrub through them and go, hmm, yes, in, out. And now I've got my in and outs set. I can preview the clip, set my in and outs, and then I can splice in or overwrite uh, into my sequence. So I could hit V on my keyboard, and that's going to put that right into my sequence. So I can be working from my source monitor as if it was a bin, and I could be looking through each one of these clips, looking for good shots, bad shots, deciding do I even want the shot, no, um, coming over here, previewing this one, setting my ins, setting my outs, and again, doing all kinds of fun stuff. And when we add something to our timeline down here, we can be using, uh, again, splice in or overwrite, but um, we could also be using the drag edit, so I could drag this from the source monitor. Let me come to the end of my timeline and I could snap this on the end of my project and boom, we're adding more media. Let me zoom out so I can tell what's going on here. Awesome. So we've got options. Now, what's super cool about this too is that um, not only is it adding it to my, my sequence, but it's also adding it again to my bin automatically. It's, it's doing that automatic linking. Um, so when I close this and I go to my video bin, we can see the clips that I've, I've brought in and I can double click this, we're going to see that those in and out marks are still saved. So let's say you were working just in the source browser and you were looking at a bunch of clips, you could be setting those ins and outs and then uh, be able to reference those ins and outs later um, once you brought those into your project. So I could just double click and we can see, oh wow, it saved them. Copying and converting linked media. There was a time where you needed to convert all linked file-based media to Avid native media before you could export. You would do this at the end of the input phase or sometimes during the editing process. This is no longer necessary, but you might decide to convert your linked media anyway. Why is that? Well, it's because we discussed this, but Avid native media performs uh, the best and provides worry-free media management. So you're working with the files in Avid Media Composer and you don't have to worry as much uh, about moving your SD card or your flash drives or wherever else the media is stored on uh, external to the Avid project. Okay, since you just linked to camera native media, we'll set up, we'll step through the conversion process for linked clips. So we just linked these clips here in our project and now we're going to look at the conversion process for both. In Lesson 15, Managing Project Media back at MC 101, you explored additional strategies and workflows. Now we're going to create Avid native media files by doing the following two functions, consolidate and transcode. Consolidate copies the media files without re-encoding the media. Let me say it again. Consolidate copies the media files without re-encoding the media. Next we have transcode. Transcode converts the media. 
transcode converts the media. Avid Media Composer, when they when you take the certification exam, they're going to ask you a lot about both of these, and they're going to want to know the differences. All right, let's keep moving. Which should you choose, though, when you're trying to convert your, your camera native media to Avid native media? Okay, well, of the two, the consolidate function is faster, but only works with Avid supported codecs. Meanwhile, transcode can, can convert any linked file. If you don't know a file's format or codec, no problem. You can go ahead and try and consolidate anyway. Uh, if it doesn't work, there's going to be a quick uh, notification that pops up telling you that unsupported uh, compression type, and uh, you won't be able to consolidate that. So you'll have to uh, transcode. Awesome. So let's run through the two processes now, and we'll start with consolidate since it's it's the preferred method by a lot of people. So using consolidate, to consolidate linked clips, we're gonna select the linked clips in the open bin. So we've got our video bin open. I'm going to link one of these, so I'm gonna consolidate one of these and I'm gonna transcode the other. So let's consolidate this one. We're going to go to clip consolidate slash transcode. So we'll click clip consolidate slash transcode. Cool. Or we could just right click the selected clip and uh, and then and, and choose consolidate slash transcode. In the transcode slash consolidate, sorry, consolidate slash transcode dialog box, we're going to activate the consolidate option in the upper left corner. So we're going to make sure that we are choosing consolidate. And then we're going to, uh, in the target drive selection, we're going to select the video and audio to same drive. So we're going to make sure that that is selected. And then we're going to click the target drive name and video data pan. So we are going to make sure we're selected on Macintosh HD. I want this to store on my computer's internal drive. If you're working off of Flash, this would be your USB. Cool. We're going to select the following options for handle for handling the media. First, we're going to do consolidate only linked media. So we'll select this button here. And then next, we're going to do skip native media files already in the target drive. So we don't want to, we don't want to consolidate uh, avid native media files already. So if we were selecting a bunch of clips, we could just select this and it would skip all of the stuff that had already been imported to avid native media. Very good. All right, next. Once you click consolidate here on the bottom right, uh, a copy, a copying media files dialog box is going to appear. That's because the consolidate function creates a new clip and a new avid native and new avid native media files. In this scenario, Media Composer is actually asking how to manage clip naming in the bin. When consolidating camera native media, select the relink native master clips to media on the target drive. So we're going to select that. And we're going to hit OK. Awesome. Once Media Composer can up. Oh, all clips were skipped during the consolidate slash transcode operation. See the console for details. Some of the items selected for consolidate foreign compression rates. Oh, there we go. This is that dialog box I told you about that it would tell us that we couldn't trans or we couldn't consolidate it. So that's what this looks like. <laughs> now you know. Okay, cool. Um, well, this isn't a compatible thing, so we would have to transcode that. But let's just imagine that this did properly transcode to Avid Native Media. Ta-da, never mind. We do not have to imagine. We can just look at it here. Okay, so looking at this closely, let's understand this slowly. So the linked clips in the bin are linked to the camera native files, which is no change, and the new clips get linked to the new MXF files in the Avid Space Media Files directory. So we can notice the clip names uh, here on screen. This here was our original linked file, and it was named this. But since we consolidated and imported, now we have an imported version that's got the same name that it used to be, and the linked version has this .old.01 file name convention now. Um, by the way, if we choose the keep uh, native master clips linked to avid, sorry, linked media files to original drive option, the newly created clips include a .new extension. The original linked clips keeps the original name, no extension. So if we were keeping the native master clips linked to media files on the original drive, 
that doesn't make sense. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, so if I'm over here, I'm, I'm doing the input and then source browser. No, sorry. If I'm in here and I if I right click this and I do the consolidate slash transcode and I select. Um, so we make sure we're selected on all the correct things. Bing, bing, boom. And then we come down here to the consolidate. If we select the keep native master clips linked to media on original drive, then that's going to uh, make, it's going to keep this name convention here and it's going to make another one that's titled dot new dot zero one instead of uh, making an old version. So um, that's just, there's a small difference there. Cool. Um, and if we wanted to, to understand this just a little bit better, we could go, okay, so this is the original that's now the old because it's linked. If I right click this and I do reveal file, where is this going to take us? It's going to take us to the camera native media because this is linked media. Now that we consolidated this and we've got a new imported version, if I hit reveal file, it's going to take us to the MXF folder um, titled one and it's going to show us the, the AVID data on operating system level that's associated with this. And that's through our, our AVID Media Composer, AVID Space Media Files. Awesome. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so let's move on now to transcode. While the transcode and consolidate processes share similarities, transcoding also converts the media. So you'll use transcode if you know you're working with an unsupported format. For example, 8.264-encoded QuickTime movies from a DSLR. And you'll use it if Media Composer, Composer advises you to when you attempt to consolidate. To transcode a clip or linked clips, we can select the linked clips here. Or we'll just select one. And then we're going to do, we can do the three different ways. We could blah, 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 we get it to blah, blah, blah. But we're just going to right click and we're going to do consolidate slash transcode. And then here in the transcode slash consolidate, we're going to hit transcode. We're going to make sure we select transcode. Uh, and then in the convert video section, we're going to select the following. We're going to select source dimensions from raster dimensions. So we're going to make sure we do source dimensions under the raster dimensions. We're going to do keep sources frame rate button. So we're going to keep the sources frame rate. And we're going to do a target video resolution such as uh, DNX HD SQ or Apple Pro Res 422. So we'll do DNX uh, H, what was it? HD, that's not here. We'll do HQ. Yeah, we'll do HQ. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, and then we're going to select the target drive so we know where this is going to end up. So we will select our target drive here. I had a little brain fart there. And then we're going to, uh, optionally, we could choose the appropriate audio conversion options. We don't have to right now. Um, and then we could click transcode, and that's going to add us right in. Boom. And now it's transcoding this clip. We're going to watch up here. Keep your eyes up here. Boom. Now it's transcoded the clip. And we can see it did the same thing that it did last time. We've got the, um, we've got a C, it didn't do the same thing. It, it did something new. It did what I was talking about earlier. We got the 3B-3. We have the 3B-3.new.01. So it's made that new that new transcoded uh, audio. Or not transcoded audio, transcoded clip in our bin. Awesome. Okay. So upon completion, new clips appear in the bin with the .new append, uh, appended to their name. Um, these clips link to the new MXF media files. Uh, once again, you can use the reveal file, so we could reveal this, and we're going to see that this, um, if I hit reveal file, sorry, there's a super bike going by my house. Um, we can see, again, it's in our MXF files. Awesome. All right. Cool. And so that's the difference between transcode and consolidate. You can save space for a long form project by transcoding camera native media to a lower quality like DNX HDLB or Apple Pro Res 422 proxy. If you do this, you'll relink the original camera native media before final output. To ensure a seamless relink, be sure to select source dimensions and keep sources frame rate in the consolidate slash transcode dialog box. That's a quick note from Avid. In the next exercise, you'll see 
if consolidate is possible for the three link clips you added during exercise 2.1. In lesson 15, you'll explore additional consolidate and transcode scenarios. So um, if you do the exercise in the book, that's exercise, um, what was that, 2.1 and 2.2, um, you'd work with that. But we are going to talk more about transcode and consolidate later this semester when we get into lesson 15 of this book. That is the last lesson. Awesome. Preparing for import. MC101 covered an overview of how to import file-based media with an emphasis on camera files and audio assets. It mentioned some considerations when importing still images or graphic files. As promised, this course digs deeper into how to input and work with graphic images and animations, specifically in Lesson 8. Since Media Composer creates avid native media files during import, which takes some time, let's wrap up Lesson 2 by looking at the settings you'll want to check before you import. Uh, these settings include, the. there's three different settings we're going to look at. First is project format, second is import settings, and third is media creation settings. We'll start with project format. So we're going to open it by going to File, up here in the upper left, Settings, and then making sure we're selected on the Format tab. Here in the Format tab, we can access our, access our presets. We could change all kinds of things. We change our raster dimension, color spacing, all kinds of other stuff. And this will adjust our, our project settings. Next, we are going to check out the import settings. So let's close this. Um, there are two ways to access the import settings. Uh, it depends on how you want to. First is in the source browser. So we could right click, right click here, and we could go to source browser. And then here in our source browser, we could simply click this little settings icon. And this brings us to our import settings. Uh, additionally, we could close out of this. And we could go to file, and then settings. And then in our user tab, we can double click the import settings button. So let me shrink some of these tabs so we can see what we're doing. Import, we can double click here. This is also going to bring up our import settings uh, window. Regardless of how you access the import settings, you can adjust settings in the image and audio tabs. So we've got our image, we can adjust settings here, and audio, we can adjust our settings here. Uh, the default image tab settings work well for video files captured in the same format as the project. That means you can skip the two-step link and consolidate transcode process and just import instead. If you're importing images or graphics, you may need to modify the settings, a topic covered in Lesson 8. We'll get there eventually. As you may recall, you'll use the Audio tab to map uh, multi-channel audio. So we would come here, we could map our multi-channel audio, um, and we may or may not get into that. You'll take a closer look at specific settings for audio mixing in Lesson 7, so we're going to cover that. That's mixing sequence audio. And the last settings window we're going to look at uh, is finally the creation media creation settings. So like import settings, you can find these in multiple locations. This time, when and how you use media creation will influence where you access the settings. That's because media creation settings include video resolution and drive destinations for newly created media files. Since we're discussing import, let's look at two locations. So first, we can access it through the source browser. So we'll go input source browser. We'll open this up again, and then uh, with the import options active, you can select the video resolution from the resolution menu. So let's, uh, we can select here in a resolutions menu. Um, and for example, the DNX HD or SQ, um, DNX HD SQ, or Apple ProRes 422. And you can set the destination drive for the new video file and audio files. So we can set our destination drives here. Again, we're going to leave it on our computer. Um, we can also do this by going through the settings window. So we could go to file and then settings. And then we could go to the project tab. And in the project tab, we're going to double click the media creation setting. So double click here. And then in the media creation settings, when performing a drag and drop import, you can bypass the source browser and set the resolution and drive destination in the import tab. So if we go to import, we can we can set up those settings here. Awesome. All right. As, the, as you can see here on screen, the media creation settings includes a full set of options for creating avid native media during processing like transcode and motion effects generation. If you tend to forget to set or check resolution and drive destinations, 
Setting up your media creation options at the start of your project can save you time and troubleshooting headaches later. With that, you're ready to import. If you've been using the source browser, that means selecting the clips and clicking the add button. What about drag and drop though? Do you remember those steps? Well, let's talk about those. You can use the drag and drop method. Let's get out of this first. You can use the drag and drop method to either link or import file-based media. Here's a quick review. So you can check uh, and adjust the relevant settings discussed in this lesson. We could go to the multi-channel audio format, resolution, and drive destinations settings, and we could change those. But to link media, if we were going to do it at an operating system level, so let's say I wanted to open this up. We'll go to desktop. I got the videos from what I'm recording right now. If I wanted to link media directly from here, so if I wanted to bring this into my project, I could click my 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 projects and get ready to drag and drop here and hold option. If I hold option or alt uh, on my operating system level and I drag this uh, to a bin, it's going to add it and it's going to link. Option, when you hold alt or option while you click and drag, it's going to link. If I simply dragged and dropped it, it would import it. So if I drag and drop, nothing happens. Um, it is supposed to import. Let's double check here why it might not be. I think I might have the settings. Uh, yeah, I think of the settings set up so that it links automatically. Um, but if your settings are default, it should just import or ask to import or consolidate and transcode. Yeah, so that's why it's only linking on my end here. With that, you've reached the end of this lesson and you're ready to move into the lesson review and knowledge check. I'll let you guys do that by yourselves. But uh, for now, don't forget to uh, keep working in Avid Media Composer. Keep getting fluid with what you're doing. Keep getting familiar with the program. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My students, I will see you in class. Bye-bye.